Why play Adam Zombie Smasher? Well, my name is Van Gerda Valor, and I'm going to do my best to help you answer that one for yourself. The short answer to why you should play Adam Zombie Smasher is that it offers a challenging, randomized, overhead strategy approach to the obliteration of many, many zombies as you attempt to turn the tides of the zombie apocalypse in your favor, with a variety of additional options to make each game different from the last. To really tell if the game is for you, though, we'll need to look at it in a little more detail. Adam Zombie Smasher was developed by Blendo Games, the same people who brought you such unusual titles as Flotilla, Gravity Bone, and 30 Flights of Loving, and was released in March of 2011. Adam Zombie Smasher takes an intriguing approach to the zombie apocalypse genre. Rather than being a foot soldier trying to wipe out the dead or civilian in a mall, here you take the role of the commander of a group of mercenaries who are attempting to fight back the ever-encroaching dead long enough to save as many of the civilians in the area as possible. Each level requires you to save a minimum number of citizens, and if you cannot reach at least that minimum, well, you can always restart and try again. If you wipe out all of the zombies in the area before nightfall, it might be possible to save them all. If not... Well, at least you save some of them, right? As the battle begins, you are shown the layout of the city you are attempting to save, where all the civilians are, and where the zombies will be coming from. With that information in hand, it is then up to you to deploy your mercenaries as best as you can to deal with the impending threat while you attempt to clear the area. The mercenaries you have with you for any given mission are randomly selected from your total pool of troops, and include foot soldiers, landmines, remote explosives, artillery, snipers, zombie bait, and even simple barricades, in addition to the ever-present extraction helicopter, which is used to fly the unfortunates from the city. These troops begin the game in a fairly useful state, but can all be upgraded in some manner as they do what they do best, such as killing zombies or extracting civilians. Not every region is hit as badly by the outbreak, and while some areas are quite easy to handle, others offer a much larger challenge with many more zombies flooding into the streets in larger areas. In some cases, the outbreak has gotten so bad that there are no living beings to be seen, and the only approach is to wipe as many of them out as possible. In order to help in your zombie obliteration agenda, you can always turn to the powers of science. Sometime into the game, you can begin to find scientists in the cities you save, and rescuing them adds to your research pool, which can be sent on a variety of upgrades to make you and your troops into a more efficient zombie-killing machine. New research is also uncovered as you fight the zombie threat, unlocking such devious war machines as the Elephant Bird Orbital Cannon and the terrifying Llama Bomb. Use these tools wisely, as they can help turn the tide of the entire apocalypse in your favor. To make your actions more significant, the game is not won and lost over individual battles either, but rather by the way you handle the zombie invasion overall. The game features two counters which track your progress as you play. One keeps track of the success you have in each area by counting the number of people saved, and the other keeps track of the success of the zombies by counting the number of people infected. Not only that, but the game features a sort of overworld map for your nation, and any infected area gives the zombies points at the end of the round, while every area you have cleared out completely earns you a similar bonus. A standard Adam Zombie Smasher campaign tends not to take too long, as the game ends one way or the other once someone reaches 6,000 points. In order to extend the game, as well as its replay value, however, Blendo included a large value of modifiable options to the beginning of a new game. The available options include setting a custom maximum score, starting with all of the mercenaries unlocked, but the zombies start stronger too, being able to have more than one of a single kind of mercenary, and with something like three artillery you won't have much city left by the end of a mission, or allowing zombies to spawn in the middle of cities instead of only from the borders. These changes certainly keep things interesting. The visual style of Adam Zombie Smasher is quite simple, with everything on the streets represented simply by a selection of colored dots, but the game still manages to use this simplistic style to convey a feeling of panic as the purple tide begins to cover the map. The explosion effects and collapsing buildings are also quite satisfying, while the game's many comic book style vignettes add an unusual twist as well, in more ways than one. The game's soundtrack is certainly decent as well, though not spectacular, although the various sound effects for mercenary interaction, grumbling zombies, and explosions are all quite good. If Adam Zombie Smasher has piqued your interest, the game will run you $10, 10 euros, or 6 pounds on Steam, so it shouldn't break the bank. So, why play Adam Zombie Smasher? Hopefully by now you have the information you need to answer that question for yourself. This has been Vanguard of Valor, thank you very much for watching, and please let me know what you thought about the video in the comments below. Until next time, bye bye.